Today, December 16th, is the anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge. A lot of you might know the history of the famous World War II battle, but what you might not know is one of the heroes named Francis Curry. He was a six foot tall, 130 pound, lanky, tough as nails automatic rifleman for the US Army's 30th Infantry Division. His actions that day were pivotal in the United States' success at the Battle of the Bulge. Sometimes we read sanitized reports of what a terrifying, bloody day it was, and we forget how one man's action can make a difference in history. For some context on PFC Curry's actions on that day, he was an orphan at age 12, and he grew up raised by foster parents in New York. Curry enlisted in the Army when he was 17 years old. He passed officer candidate school, but he was denied a commission because they said he was too immature, which clearly was one of the least accurate counseling statements the Army has ever given to anyone ever given how incredible Curry proved to be at leading troops later in the war. They sent him to the 30th Infantry Division as a private first class. He landed at Normandy a month after D-Day, and then he made his way to the front lines. Now, the Battle of the Bulge was Hitler's last attempt to end the war with the Western powers in a way that would be more favorable to him. He wasn't trying to win the war at this point, he just wanted to be able to negotiate peace on better terms. Germany wanted to defeat the Allied forces in a surprise blitz-style counterattack. Many of their other offenses relied on the element of surprise, and they accomplished complete surprise against the Allies here. They caught the Allies off guard because of a failure of intelligence, and the Allies were preoccupied with their own offensive plans at this point. We can certainly agree on one thing, which is that if the Germans had won the Battle of the Bulge, the war would have dragged on for far longer, and countless more lives would have been needlessly lost at that point. The Germans' attack was made up of a force of 400,000 men, 1,400 tanks, and another 2,600 artillery pieces. The Allied troops at the beginning of the battle were made up of 200,000 men, most of whom were like Francis Curry. Exhausted from weeks of fighting, they were low on morale because they weren't getting the supplies that they needed. Curry and his unit were located at Malmedy, at a choke point where they were guarding a bridge crossing. Malmedy is also the infamous location where on December 17th, German soldiers from the 1st SS Panzer Division killed 84 American prisoners of war out in an open field. Word of this spread fast across the Allied lines, and you can imagine how angry they must have been, how mad they must have been when they heard about 84 of their buddies getting killed in a field. And they knew, now more than ever, that surrender was not an option. A few days after this, on December 21st, is when Francis Curry performed the actions that earned him the Medal of Honor. His unit, while they're guarding the bridge, notices captured American tanks rolling up on their position to attack them, followed by German tanks and infantry. PFC Curry repeatedly stands up and fires his automatic rifle down at the German positions, unloading magazine after magazine of rounds on the enemy. Curry is with 3rd Platoon, and after prolonged fighting, their initial position is overrun, which forces them to withdraw to a nearby paper factory, and they're soon surrounded by German forces. He sees the German tanks moving up on his friend's position, and the tanks start to hammer away at his buddies and pins them down. He tosses down his BAR and picks up a bazooka, but he realizes there's no ammo left. He runs across the street while under heavy fire and grabs a bunch of rockets and anti-tank grenades, he lifts up the bazooka and he fires it directly at the German tank, knocking it out with one well-placed shot exactly where you need to hit a tank, which is between the turret where it's joined with the body of the tank. Curry quickly changes his position and sees three Germans in a doorway of a house. He shoots all three of them with his Browning automatic rifle and runs out of cover, sprinting within 50 yards of the house so he can destroy it with a rocket. In an interview with the Times, he's quoted as saying, I got all three with one good burst. He grabs cover and loads the bazooka. His buddies lay down suppressing fire while he stands up and fires off a shot at the enemy held house. The round blows half a wall clear off and Curry turns, notices five of his friends pinned down by fire from that house and they're asking him for help. In that moment, he realizes that his friends have no chance of escaping until the enemy tank and infantry have been completely silenced. All while under intense fire, Curry crosses the street to a vehicle and grabs a bunch of anti-tank grenades. He climbs into the half-track in full view of the Germans and fires a machine gun at the house. He jumps out, runs to a new covered location, he gets in another machine gun position where the crew has been killed, and he lays down intense fire in the German position with the 50 caliber machine gun. And this weapon in Francis Curry's hands has the power to force the larger German forces to retreat and his friends are able to then retreat safely. Curry's actions on that day are directly credited with saving his entire battalion's flank from being overrun. 
After the Battle of the Bulge, he became a squad leader and had three Purple Hearts by the end of the war. He is one of 20 American soldiers who received the Medal of Honor for their actions during the Battle of the Bulge. By the end of the month-long battle, there were 80,000 American casualties and 100,000 German casualties. It was the final German offensive of the war. After the war, Francis Curry was turned into the first G.I. Joe toy for their 1998 Medal of Honor series. And when he passed away at 94 years old in October, he was survived by his wife of 70 years and his seven grandchildren. The New York governor ordered flags on all government buildings to be flown at half staff to honor Curry when he passed away. He was one of the last three living Medal of Honor recipients of World War II. Curry spent 30 years after the war doing what he loved, helping out fellow veterans as a counselor at the VA hospital in New York. If you like this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.